Hello everyone, welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. Today we have a full breakdown of this week's spotlight caches, Werewolf by Night, including Silk and Ghost Spider as potential options for cards you can get. In addition, this is video one of two today, so make sure you're subbed so you don't miss out. We're expecting a patch, and if there is a patch, as soon as it drops, I'll have a video for you. So make sure you're ready. Let's get started. Before we start, I'd like to invite you to sub. We bring you at least two brand new decks every weekday on this channel. We're going to bring you something like 25 decks for you to play today. Don't miss out. We bring you proven decks that are ahead of the meta that can get to high infinite, that can get your infinity orders this week with Infinity Conquest open. In addition, we're in the middle of the biggest giveaway in all of Marvel Snap. We give away at least 15 season passes every single week. We are giving away 15 Ms. Marvel season passes between now and next Tuesday. Here's what you need to do right here on this YouTube, starting with this video. If you're subbed and you comment any video from now until next Monday, you are entered to win a season pass. That's it. You comment. I pull from the YouTube comments. Um, five season pass will be given away that way. Also, um, right around the same time this goes up over on Twitter, there will be a season pass announcement at Snap Judgecast. You have to do what that tweet says. It basically follow, like, retweet, and uh, comment a content creator you'd like to see on the podcast. As long as you do that, you are entered to win one of five more season passes. Finally, over on Marvel Snap, so an article should be going up Wednesday, that's tomorrow as of the posting of this video, that will say how to win one of five more season passes. If we give you more chances and more ways to win than anyone, please hit that sub button. Our spotlight card for the week, our Halloween card, is Werewolf by Night. It is a Series 5 card, that means 6,000 tokens, and I think this one's going to end up being worth it. After you play an on-reveal card at another location, move there and gain plus 2 power. So you play a non-reveal card at another spot. Werewolf is a moves there and becomes a 3-5. You play a non-reveal at another spot. He's now moving there and a 3-7. Obviously, that is an extraordinarily powerful ability. Um, a 7 is great stats. If you can manage to play 3 on reveals, a 3-9 is now ahead of rate for any other 3-drop in the game, barring, I guess, Surfer. These are the variants. I know some people determine what they're buying based on the variants available. So we've got the, if you open enough spotlights, you'll get the Night Forged one. Um, that one's cool. I like it. Uh, I'd really prefer either the comic cover, the Gil Kane, or the Greg Land. I don't usually love Greg Land, but I think this one is gorgeous. Um, if either one of these are in my shop tomorrow, I'm buying them and will be running them. Because, like, I don't actually like the base art. I think the base art looks like a Rat by Night. But either of the other two, I think, are glorious, and I would be very, very happy to have and run them. So if they are options, they will be mine. Um, that's the only variants we have. This is a very variant short card that happens from time to time. There's only like a couple of Negasonics to this day. There's only a few Vipers, so on and so forth. But we've got these three variants. Hopefully, you pick up one you like. Our other spotlight variants are Silk and Ghost Spider. Um, I don't love this Ghost Spider. There's a surprising a few a number of ghost spiders i really like given that i absolutely love her costume but here we are i don't know what to say about that except that i wish there were more ghost spiders i like that like had her classic look classic as in 2010s but still and um while i like this silk i also have the last spotlight silk which is one of my favorite variants and the venomized i don't usually love venomized but the like venom coming up over her head from behind is absolutely like super cool so i have that silk i'm gonna keep running that silk for the time being and be perfectly happy doing so so i don't plan to open for these in fact since i have so many tokens i might just use tokens on uh werewolf we'll see how i feel all right uh synergies surfer and surfer deck cards are basically the synergies here um we do know that this works through cosmo if you play the honor field card on cosmo it does not have to resolve werewolf by night has been confirmed will move over to that cosmo lane and get its plus two power it also works with Craven. Um, a lot of move is not on reveal. Cards like Silk don't do anything for um, Werewolf, but Spider-Man does, but Ghost Spider does, but Iron Fist does, etc. You do that kind of stuff, you move on Craven, then you play another move card or another on reveal off Craven. It moves on, off. It can go back and forth on Craven and gain you quite a lot of power. There's a chance it works with on reveal long stuff, but that tends to want to stack your on reveals onto one location. That is bad for it, so I don't think that works. Um, I think this is enough stats that it's going to go in good stuff decks. 
plus three is completely broken, but basically anytime we see plus two, it's a good card. So that's my general gist. Plus one tends to be like fine, but not great. Think Nikia. Um, think, I mean, Blue Marvel, good card, but not like completely broken in the later games. Plus two is basically always good. Think current Elsa or current Surfer. Well, plus three, past Elsa, past Surfer, breaks Marvel Snap Forge. Um, but plus two is basically always worth playing in my experience. So I think this is basically guaranteed to be good. It's worth noting, though, that it does have to actually move to get the plus two if location is full. It's not moving. It's not getting plus two. All right, let's keep going. Deck time. This is Nico Wolf. I think this is going to be really good. I think Bounce is really good and going to be an excellent home. I basically said Werewolf by Knife should replace. My thought is Werewolf by Knife should replace Bishop in these decks. And my logic for that replacement is if you play this on three, it can. it's very likely, given that you're bouncing a lot of your move cards with Falcon and Beast, to get up to a 3-9. And if it's a 3-9 or 3-11, Bishop... It's about as big as Bishop ever gets, right? It's now as big as Bishop gets. It doesn't need to be in hand for Bast or anything else to really get that high. Now this is a stellar, stellar card. So, like, you can play it and then, like, play Forge in another location, right? And now it's a 3-5. And then you play Nico in another location. Um, Now it's a 3-7. And then Nico's card gets an... The card you play with Nico gets an on-reveal, and now it's a 3-9. So this card's going to want to be with Nico a lot because Nico represents two on reveals you can play in different spots. Be a little bit careful with Beast, although it's not going to reset its power. It'll, um, you don't want to like play an on reveal and then, uh, although once Beast resolves, it will jump into Beast lane and get the extra power because now there's suddenly space for it. This is going to be stellar. This is going to be really good in Bounce. I think this is one of Bounce's. Everyone knows this is going to be great in Surfer. Um, I should probably run Sarah in this, I know, but I wanted to try and showcase a really cool thing. That is Goose and Jean Grey basically win a lane um, on turn five. If you can play them in the right spot, your opponent will not be able to play a four, five, or six cost card. They will have to play a three cost or less card. They are not allowed to then play anything more expensive, which means this combo is extraordinarily, extraordinarily powerful. Um... That should work really well with this, right? Like, because Werewolf is going to get so big if you can get that Surfer buff on six, right? Like, let's say you do that into a um, lane that already has Jeff and Werewolf. On turn six, now you play Brood, and Werewolf moves over there, and now you have that huge lane, right? Like, you've won the Goose Surfer, the Goose uh, Jean Grey lane, and then you play Surfer, and now Surfer is pumping your whole board, and you have just gigantic lanes that should win. You can also... um do the brood absorb men thing that seems like it's pretty powerful if werewolf is at just on four and five right on four you brood uh werewolf jumps into that lane filling it but you get that extra power on five you absorb men werewolf jumps into that lane and now you get that extra power there and then the last turn you just drop like whatever in surfer polaris or spider-man and surfer have fun he's gonna jump two more times and get a ton more power it's going to be awesome. I think this is going to be an extraordinarily powerful way to win games of Marvel Snap, and I think Surfer might be back into the meta because of this. Uh, I want to make a Surfer bounce, but I did not for this video. Just keep an eye out for that. That's coming soon. Um, Kraken Null's Infinity Ticket Surfer. Kraken Null hit and got um, an Infinity Ticket with a version of this deck. Uh, it was running Miles. I basically replaced Miles with Werewolf and added Nico and said, let's go. Um, basically, all the move cards... Half of these are on reveals, right? Doctor Strange is on reveal. It's probably going to pull Werewolf, but still. Um, Juggernaut is an on reveal. Iron Fist, Ghost Spider, etc. On reveals. All good stuff for Werewolf by Night. You can do that on and off Craven, right? You can Iron Fist in a lane and that as long as Werewolf is out. And then um, punch Craven, like punch Werewolf into Craven or punch... Um, excuse me. If Werewolf is already, he's going to jump to Craven, And then you can punch him into... And uh, he'll jump to Iron Fist, and then you can punch him into that Craven lane um, for even more power. And then you can pull him out with Ghost Spider, whatever. Actually, he's not going to get the move if you pull him out with Ghost Spider, because now he's not moving. So he doesn't work amazingly with Ghost Spider. You want to play a different card um, for Ghost Spider to get that extra power. But, like, there's a lot of ways to do this, right? Um, this is going to be hard to play, but it's going to be stellar. It's also got, like, the free Storm Juggernaut lane. This is really, really hard to beat in a Surfer deck. Um just the power that ends up being in that lane in a surfer deck ends up usually winning the snap. Because that is a uh, five, nine power in a lane that they can't get into, right? Like, that's pretty damn good. And you can still Iron Fist punch something in there if you really need to, or Nico push something in there if you get lucky, or Spider Man can roll in there and you can. And at that point, like, then you can just drop like a last turn Vulture into Ghost Spider um, with Werewolf out and you're winning full snap games. 
Next up, Werewolf by Nico. Uh, I don't know. This just seems like a cool deck. It's basically a surfer, another surfer move. This one has Sarah and Alioth in it. Um, my basic logic here is that, like, you can expect Alioth, but also if Alioth costs five, then all of a sudden you can drop a Craven, a Silk, a Jeff, an Iron Fist, or a Nico with it, and that all seems good. Alioth is going to pull over your Werewolf, which she also seems really, really awesome, right? Especially if you can play an extra card. Um, so, like, you Alioth, and um, that's going to pull Werewolf, but then you, like, also Iron Fisted, and you punch that Alioth out of that lane. Now you have a big Werewolf that won that lane, and, like, um, Alioth is and Iron Fist adding power in another lane seems pretty freaking good. That kind of thing is just going to be awesome for this deck. Um, Iron Lad hitting Werewolf is just absolutely nuts, right? Iron Lad hitting everything in this deck is kind of good. Werewolf is going to go great with Elsa, just like it goes great with Nico, because it's going to be able to fill a lane and move out of that lane. So this is a lot of synergy for these cards in this deck. Next up, we have Classic Move. This is our old school move deck. Um, this is one of the ones I love. Basically, um, Werewolf just gives you an extra big thing to do, right? The Werewolf, um, you go something like Multiple Man, Werewolf into Hulkbuster on Multiple Man, and now Werewolf and Hulkbuster in that lane, and then you can go Spider over to pull that Multiple land, Man to multiple spots, and, like, you're just moving a lot of big power everywhere. You can also just, like, Shuri Vision seems pretty damn good as a general rule. Shuri Vision is very powerful. Um, you Shuri Vision in a spot. Um, my basic gist, one of my main plans for this, is to go um, something like um, Nico into Craven, Elsa, fill it with Werewolf, right? Or fill it with Vulture. Either way works fine. I think Werewolf is a little better. And then um, it's now turn... Uh, Five, I drop Vision. Turn six, I drop Heimdall. And then Werewolf is going to jump over to that Heimdall for a bunch of extra power. It just seems like it's crazy strong, right? Like that Craven's going to pump up a million, and that Werewolf is going to pump up a million, or that uh, Vulture is going to pump up a million, as the case may be. It's just a great way to get a lot, a lot of power on the board of Marvel Snap. I think this might be the card that this classic Heimdall style move deck needs. And like when you don't want a Heimdall, Vision is the same power, right? So you can still Vision or, or whatever else. You can even just play some like cheaper on reveals, right? Like if Vulture was a late play, you can often on that last turn get Vulture up to a 13 power card. Wins games. Good deck, hard to play, but I think this is going to be legit. Next up, we have Werewolf by Wave. I think this is just going to be a solid way to play the card. Um, fundamentally, if people keep cutting Mobius, you can wave Mobius on five, right? And then you've got like, um, your werewolf is going to jump over there and be nice and big because of wave. That's a lot of power for that turn. And then you drop doom, fill all the lanes, drop arrow, close that out. As the case may be, uh, I think werewolf might also be good with arrow. If they can only play one card, they you arrow, and now your arrow, which was an eight power play, is now getting the werewolf power plus two. And if you're doing that on Craven, that's now like, oh, wow, they played something big, and it doesn't matter. I still win. Even if it's Alioth, right? Like, you're getting... um the werewolf move and the craven move and that's enough to like beat an alley if you can have priority all right those are my werewolf decks i think that's it um does werewolf look good yeah i think it's a ton of potential power um it is weak to shadow king but like so is half the meta run luke cage if you're worried about it i think this is likely to be back in january but it doesn't have a return date um the big question here and like i should have highlighted for if you need Alioth and Silk, this is tough because Alioth is in uh, spotlights next week. And you, like, I think Alioth is one of the must have cards in the game. But do you also need Silk? Um, if you need Silk, like, if you need Silk, now Silk is another uh, 6,000 token card you need along with Alioth. I think if you need Silk and Alioth, this is worth opening, um, at least for now. If you have Alioth but need Silk, then you 100%. I think you just always open this week to get Silk. Um, and man thing, I don't think there's any reason on earth not to, as long as you have four spotlight caches saved up. Make sure you check out this week's Snap Judgments, uh, on the Marvel Snap YouTube. It should be out, I want to say Thursday, where we will actually talk about how and why you open spotlight caches and when to be careful and so on. We're talking with guest gaming and big math, so make sure you check that out. Okay. Our next spotlight card is Silk. Silk is Series 5, 6,000 tokens. After any card is played here, this moves to another location. Silk is one of the best cards in Marvel Snap, period. 
full stop. It is a card you really want to own in Snap. All good. good. Some Silk decks. This is Den's move layoff. Um, it's basically just a deck that takes advantage of Silk popping onto Craven and having a lot of power. And then if you can get ahead using all of these really powerful cards, you um, win with Alioth or Doom. Simple. You could throw Elsa in here. You don't have to. Um, probably replace Mobius with Elsa at this point in Marvel Snap. But like, either way, this deck is complete. Or I guess Miles? Either one. One of the two. Either way, this deck is completely sick and one of the best decks in the game. And you should play it. Silk is needed, though. It's not like a recommendation. Next up, we have... um. This is a King Venom deck. It is a Legion move deck. People forgot how to play against Legion. And it's me, I'm people. Legion is a back-breaking card that you can play around, but it's not easy. So this is a nice, simple Legion move deck. Silk is, again, necessary here. Silk is really great with Elsa because, like, you put her as the... um third card and then the fourth card will get the buff and then move her letting you play another card there it's really nice um hopefully it bounces onto craven at that point and you get an extra two power that way captain marvel with that elsa buff is great for six that moves to win the game is awesome um she triggers miles basically every day turn so miles is a one five and one fives are good i don't know if you've played enough snap to know that but they are i promise uh this deck is also great this has fallen out of favor a little bit I think that it shouldn't. I think that this deck is still one of the top decks in Snap. People stop playing Legion because of Alioth, and I'm telling you, I think that's just a mistake. All right, our next spotlight card is Ghost Spider. That is Series 5, 6,000 tokens, and this is a former Season Pass card. So if you bought the Season Pass, you had it as a 2-3, which was way worse than a 1-2. On reveal, the last card you played moves here. Ghost Spider is a good card, but not a must-have card. It is better Iron Fist, but Iron Fist usually does a fair enough version. If you are looking to play Phoenix Force decks from last week's spotlights, or having Phoenix Force, Ghost Spider gets significantly better. But short of that, it's just a fine card. It's a good card, it's just not meta. Uh, this is the Phoenix Force deck I'm talking about. I think this is the best Phoenix Force deck in the game. Sometimes Forge goes for Nico. I'm still not sure if that's right. Um, I think that requires more changes to the deck than just that one change, but this is one of the best decks in the game. It was created by Spyro, as far as I'm aware, so you should a thousand percent be checking this deck out if you have Phoenix Force and Cole Ghost Spider. This is where I would start. My other Ghost Spider deck for the day is basically this move one. Um, note that Silk is also in it, and Silk is way more important in it. This does not need to run Ghost Spider. This is just another way to run the move shell. You can, instead of Ghost Spider, include um, include Iron Fist, because Ghost Spider is really mostly here to uh, move something either to Craven or to pull Spider-Man 2099 over and get a kill. That's like your turn four or five play, or just both on turn five, right? Um, that's perfectly fine. It's a great play. It's very powerful. This is combat's deck and combat rolled with it. It's also one of the last good homes for Angela in the game. Um, I think this deck is very cool. I think that, again, do you need Ghost Spider for it, though? All right. Final conclusions. I wrote Man Thing. I meant Werewolf by Night. Werewolf by Night is uh, probably great, but we've been wrong before. So perhaps you should wait. If you can afford to wait till the weekend so we have some data, that's a good idea, especially with the patch coming later. But remember, we will have a full patch video for you as soon as that's up. Um, if you need Silk and not Alioth, I think it's safe to just go for it. If you need Alioth, he's probably still more important than these cards, but that's tough since he's with Null, who most people have, and Negasonic, who has thus far not found a home in the meta. If you can get three Series 5 this cards, this cards this week, I think you may have to, but still wait till Friday if you don't have Alioth. Ghost Spider is just a mid-fine card. If, and I don't know why I keep writing man thing on this slide, ridiculous. If Werewolf by Night is mid two, then you just pulled two mid series five cards, which isn't great value. But I still think he's going to be great. I think Werewolf by Night has serious potential to be the most important card this season. And that's saying something because Man Thing is in the current best deck, not Werewolf. Man Thing is in the current best deck. And, well, Elsa got nerfed. So, like, Elsa would, would is like far and away the most important, but like Elsa is still one of the best cards in the game. I think Man Thing has that kind of potential right now. All good. Thanks so much for watching. Please remember to sub. Check back later. We'll be back with uh, Patch News. Peace.